It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid J. Nolan here. I told y'all that the Diddy saga was going to continue. I told y'all that I had some more content on the way. I'm not breaking this story, so you know what I mean? I'm not going to act like I got some exclusive information. I'm just saying I told y'all that the entertainment industry is imploding. I hate that we have to have this ongoing series, I guess. I didn't intend for it to be a series. Never intended for none of this to be in succession. It's just that with all of this New York state thing going on with that law, with the ladies that have to submit their information before they do away with the survivor's law. Um, everybody's going out and putting a bid in saying their last words before they have to forever hold their peace. Now we have another nasty lawsuit on Diddy. Okay. Just last week we had notification of Cassie, right? Following that, an old interview resurfaced of an ex-girlfriend of his that came out and said she went through some of the same things that her chest was stomped on in a relationship with Diddy, different things of that nature. Then we have the Harv Pierre situation, which is Diddy's longtime friend and partner at Bad Boy Records. And it's being said that he was partaking in some of the same sorts of activities on his assistant. Now we've got another lady by the name of Joy Dickerson Neal who's coming out about an incident that happened way back in 1991, 30 years ago with Diddy. Okay. Now I know for some of you people out there, a lot of you people out there, they're going to say, well, why did it take so long? What took you 30 years to finally get this shit out there? What is it about today? I can't really be mad at anybody that questions that, you know, but at the same time, you also got to think you cannot erase somebody's experience. You know what I mean? You don't know the mind of a victim unless you've actually been a victim. She probably didn't see any justice coming at any point. She held on to it. And this was her final window to finally seek any sort of retribution about the situation. So she took it. We don't know what's real. We don't know what's true. All I can do is tell you guys what's been documented thus far. Let's get into it. OK, so I'm on CNN.com. I'm not showing you guys the article, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. They say Sean Diddy Combs was hit with a second lawsuit in as many weeks, accusing him of drugging and essaying a woman who claimed she was also a victim of alleged revenge porn by the music artist. The civil suit has been filed under the New York Adult Survivors Act, naming Combs and his companies, including Bad Boy Entertainment. And, just, and this is just the latest in a rush of cases filed against high profile men, among others, as the window to file under the state's look back law closes this week civil suit filed in new york supreme court demands a trial by jury and seeks damages plaintiff brings suit against defendants to redress the substantial and lifetime injuries she has suffered as a result of being drugged s aid and abused and being the victim of revenge porn that sean combs or p diddy created and distributed a spokesperson for Diddy says that these allegations are made up and completely not credible. They say that this is purely a money grab. So clearly we're not going to have the same 24 hour settlement that we saw between him and Cassie with this case. They continue. They say this last minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. Mr. Combs never assaulted her and she implicates companies that did not exist at the time of when she's talking about. Now, this alleged victim, Miss Joy Dickerson Neal, she was a Syracuse University student at the time of the 1991 incident and had previously appeared with Sean Combs in a video clip of a music video. OK, so that photo that you see over here, this is actually a photo of them together in a 1991 music video. This is during the time when he was at Uptown Entertainment or Uptown Records. This is before Bad Boy took off. This is before all of the big moves right he was just a guy working at uptown finding artists throwing parties doing different shit the suit alleged that she agreed to a dinner at a harlem restaurant reluctantly with sean combs while on school break for holidays okay now this is the same restaurant that she worked at at the time so this is like a really whack date okay how you take a woman out on a date to the place where she work at she eat this shit every day what is special you're not gonna woo her what you going to buy out the motherfucking chicken in the back? Let me get all the fried chicken, please, sir. And yeah, whatever you like to drink. I know they don't let you drink the good shit in here. So go ahead and fill your cup. Yes, yes, yes. Come the fuck on, bro. So boom, he pushed her to keep him company while he attended a few things in the city. So she caved in. I guess she had some time being that she was on holiday break from school. 
The suit alleges that during the date, he intentionally drugged her, resulting in her being in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk. While at dinner, she left to use the restroom and left her drink unattended. That is what she alleges. So she went to the bathroom. She come back sipping on whatever she had. And shortly thereafter, she was not able to stand or walk on her own. And uh, this is where the terror began. In the car, the suit alleges she took a puff of a blunt from Diddy under pressure from Combs. And from that point on, her memory is incomplete. So not only was she allegedly drugged in her drink, taken off balance, but they also got in the car. He's smoking on some wet, I guess. And he offered it to her. She took a puff like training day driving first to a music studio where she could not get out of the car. Combs proceeded to a place he was staying to essay her because she had been drugged. Plaintiff lacked the physical ability or mental capacity to fend Combs off. The suit alleges that Diddy video recorded this incident, this act, right? And days later, a male friend revealed to her that he had seen it. Horrified, Miss Dickerson asked how many others saw it, to which he responded, everyone. Now, it must be noted that they're saying that uh, this, this male that she spoke to is allegedly Devante Swing of former Jodeci fame. Okay? He was one of their mutual friends. He found out about it. They said Diddy was, was showing it to everybody on some paid in full Rico shit. And he's like, yo, everybody done seen this shit. We seen you on tape. He getting, he getting down with you. Thereafter, Dickerson alleges her life went into a quote unquote tailspin. She was admitted to a hospital for severe depression and ideation of taking her own life. According to the suit, Dickerson filed police reports at unspecified agencies in New York and New Jersey and spoke to several prosecutors hoping to press charges and was told her allegations would need to be corroborated. And this is where having male allies would be so fucking clutch, right? Devonte swing, bro. Like, why didn't you not obtain a copy? You know what I mean? Why didn't you, somebody has some, somebody on this earth would need to have a copy of that tape, not for your own personal enjoyment, but to turn it back in to the actual person who was victimized. You know what I mean? So that she could have proof to show the authorities. But of course, the music industry is a boys club. It's been that way from the jump. It remains to be that way that today. How many niggas are really going to take it up on themselves to be the hero in that situation and then have the blowback of Diddy going back and saying, hmm, who did I, who all did I show this? And then enforcing his rage upon all these motherfuckers till he finds out who did it. Niggas is bitch made in the industry. You know what I mean? You know how it go. The suit goes on to say Combs had experienced great success with the launch of the late Notorious B.I.G.'s career, whose hit single Juicy charted on Billboard and claims witnesses were terrified that Combs would retaliate against them and that they would lose future business and music opportunities if they made a statement in support of her. That supports exactly what I was just saying. The accuser was trying to gain a foothold in the music industry herself, working as a location scout for industry cameraman. And despite her allegations of emotional pain, continued to work in the industry at a DJ management company after the incident. So she worked at a DJ management company. I think she was helping to manage uh, DJ Funk Master Flex at that time. She eventually left as Combs star continued to rise and his presence was inescapable. It was the filing of the lawsuit from Cassie that actually inspired her and forced her to face this assault once again. OK, and we all know what Cassie's um, lawsuit was all about. Furthermore, um, it is being claimed that Diddy had allegedly pursued her for a romantic or sexual relationship on repeated occasions. But she rejected his advances because she had heard about his alleged history of treating women badly, according to the suit. Dickerson, Neal and Combs had friends and acquaintances in common, as I stated, and they also had appeared in a music video, as I stated before. She did not go to the hospital or initially report the assault to police because she was confused, in pain, and felt ashamed. Uh, she tearfully told her friend about the alleged assault the next day, according to the suit. Again, she later filed reports in New York and New Jersey. 
The New York City Police Department would not confirm if they received a report from Dickerson Neal, but they said that they take SA cases extremely seriously and they urge anyone who has been a victim to file a police report so that they can perform a comprehensive investigation and offer support and services to survivors. Dickerson went back into the music industry at a certain point working and uh, while working at a party, she ran into Diddy again who allegedly backed her into a corner and inappropriately confronted her. It was not clear how long after the alleged assault that this party took place. Combs allegedly got on his knees during that interaction and insisted that he did not do what she was saying, basically saying, Hey, I did not do or whatever you telling people, you know, I did not do that to you. He got down on his knees, right? Pleading with her. I guess, to not move forward with any sort of investigation on him. This latest suit accuses Combs of assault and battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, trafficking, and revenge porn. Dickerson Neal is seeking compensatory damages for mental and emotional injury, distress, pain, and suffering and injury. Okay. Everyone deserves to be heard and Combs should not be immune from liability because of his wealth and public stature. That's what Miss Dickerson Neal's attorney said in a statement. Another attorney adds, our client has not been able to escape the continuing impact of the harm that Combs caused her many years ago through the Adult Survivors Act. She can avail herself to the courts to finally seek justice. Now, today is the final and last day of the Adult Survivors Act advocating for women, allowing them to go back in time to punish or seek retribution on these people. Right. So I would not be surprised if another whole new round of of implications, allegations, et cetera, come out today, leading up all the way into midnight, because these are people's last ditch efforts to get their stories heard. There's also going to be some people, I hate to say it, there's also probably going to be some people that are going to put false stories out there to see if they could fit in somewhere, get broken off a little something. And that's just the way the game goes because not everybody is honest. But the way this year is ending, a lot more people are going down. There's a lot of people in entertainment that are also in these lawsuits in the state of New York. I, I talked about Jamie Foxx. I've talked about uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. I didn't really go in detail about him but he's also included. Uh, L.A. Reid is also included in some of these. There's rock artists that are being implicated, executives in the industry. So many folks are being named. At this point, it does almost feel like Hollywood as we know it, the music industry as we know it, may need to be burned down and started anew. But what is that really going to do? I don't know. Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right. Much love and respect, y'all. Peace. King of my city in Kodasak Coming out swinging like soldier rat Leading my people like quarterback But I study this shit, I'm an almanac Had to get up and grind Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mile We finna do more to survive, I need my check Spinning the block for the gouda We hitting the jeweler to flood out the net We don't do beef for computers I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest Niggas be looking perplexed So keeping my foot on their neck No map, I trust my gut for the quest With drama, I'm fully oppressed I was ready for years and they died of me All of a sudden they tell me they proud of me I been dropping these haters like calories Cross my mind, I came back with some battery Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner Packing a stick with a drummer Wanna catch my bad one fumble I done came too far to be humble